welcome to the Building Up Women in Property podcast. I'm your host, Rebecca Bangura, and I'm thrilled to have you join us today. Whether you're a woman aiming to become a confident, impactful leader, or you're a leader committed to promoting gender equity in the property and construction industry, this podcast is designed specifically for you. Join me every week to gain insights and inspiration that will leave you excited and confident about taking your next steps. Thank you for tuning in. Now let's dive into today's topic. Hello, hello. Today we are talking about your leadership shadow. Now, some of you may be familiar with this concept and others might be tuning in brand new to this idea. No matter where you are on your journey, this episode will help you understand what your leadership shadow is and how to intentionally create a shadow that aligns with who you are, who you want to be, and how you want to influence others within your team, your organization, and in fact, your industry. So what is a leadership shadow? Essentially, it is how a leader's behaviors, actions, and decisions cast a shadow over their team. And that then influences the organizational culture and overall performance. Another way to think of this is the unconscious influence that a leader has. And usually our shadow has positives and negatives. Because we are in the middle, we don't necessarily see the amount of influence and impact that we have. And that's why today's conversation is so important for all of us. Every single one of us casts a leadership shadow. People are always going to do as we do, not as we say. This is a key distinction because It's really easy to preach something and then not follow through on that idea or that promise yourself. When leaders do this, it completely erodes trust. Trust is a cornerstone. It is the foundation of a strong, cohesive, high-functioning team. So the more aware we are of our leadership shadow, the more intentional we can be about casting the right shadow and having that right influence and impact that not only allows us to perform, but supports, motivates, and excites those around us to achieve at their highest level and to work towards common goals. That is ultimately what a leader is responsible for doing. And that is the key distinction between an individual performer and a leader. A leader is about bringing everyone on that journey and creating something bigger than the sum of all its parts. And I think we've all experienced at some point in our careers where there has been a real disconnect with the people where our boss has set expectations or has set a certain agenda and certain goals yet failed to follow through on any of the deliverables or to engage in a conversation about how to get there. When we work with people like this, it is incredibly disheartening because it feels that no matter what we do as an individual – We are not supported. We are not aligned in terms of where we are trying to get to and how we are going to get there. Not only does that erode trust, but it also erodes morale. Once those two things are gone, that is when we start to see more disharmony in teams, more dysfunction. We start to see people looking at other options. And that is not what we want as leaders. And I think it's important to recognize as well that leadership shadows is more than just your personal brand or your reputation. Because it's not just about what they think about us. It is about what actions and behaviours are driven as a result of our influence. It is how we impact culture. It is how we drive performance and decision-making or the lack thereof. Our leadership shadow can be cast far and wide, far beyond what we understand, far beyond what we are aware of. And so it may impact far beyond your immediate team or colleagues, it can ripple out and have, you know, a positive or negative impact across the entire organizational culture. You may have had this experience where you've worked for an organization where 99% of people are amazing and aligned and really working together or working towards the same things. But there is one leader who does things differently and runs their own race and exhibits behavior that is not aligned with the organization's values or culture. I have experienced this where everyone's turned a blind eye to that behavior. They have let things go unsaid. They have let inappropriate behaviors continue because this one person is a high performer. And whilst in the short term, that leader or that person can often continue to create great immediate results, What happens over the long term is that 
that one person, that one bad seed creates this ripple effect where people start questioning what it means to be part of this team or what it means to be part of this organisation. And they look to that one example of poor behaviour and that determines that this is no longer where they want to be or it opens up the door for other people to behave poorly and get away with it. And nobody wants that. And that's why it's so important, particularly as leaders, to make sure that we are always acting in alignment because we never know who is watching and who is being influenced by our behaviours and our actions. You know, and this idea of the leadership shadow was developed by Pine Street, which was part of Goldman Sachs' leadership development team. It really comprises all four key elements. So it's, you know, what I say, how I act, what I prioritise, and how I measure. And when we think about this in practical terms, there are really three key components that we see play out in relation to our leadership shadow. The first is the role modelling aspect. So as a leader, we set the tone for behaviours and the ethics and the standard of work. And ultimately, this is what forms a organisation's culture. Now, I want to be really clear that culture is not about just having a mission statement or values articulated on a poster or on your website. This is about how we do things around here. This is about what it means to be part of the organisation. It is not about fancy marketing. It is about what it is like within the organisation. And it is essential that leaders and aspiring leaders always set the example. You know, it's the idea of, you know, leaders go first, right? Don't expect other people to do what you're not willing to do because everyone within the organisation will look to you. The tone you set and the standard you set is the standard that everyone else will rise or fall to. In our industry, like a great example is workplace flexibility. This is something our industry has struggled with and continues to struggle with because we work in a fast-paced, complex environment that often involves really long hours. So, and if we are promoting that we need more flexibility, time to reset and relax and come back to work refreshed so that we can be present and performing at the highest level, then we need to ensure that leaders are demonstrating that. And that means little things like not sending emails at 11 o'clock at night. It might mean that leaders take time off for family events, for kids' morning teas or for Mother's Day or Father's Day, and that they don't do it privately, but they actually normalise that behaviour with their broader team by sharing it, by providing that insight. I was actually reading some research recently. I can't remember where it was from. I think it was maybe the Harvard Business Review. They were talking about how women ask for flexibility in their roles so that they can attend events with their children and do family things. And what the research actually showed was that men do do the same activities. They do take the time out to go to sports carnivals and different things, but men don't talk about it. So they don't ask for permission to do it and they just figure out how to make it work. And whilst that's great that men are showing up for these events, the disparity between women asking permission and men just doing creates this misalignment in terms of women needing more time off for work for these types of things. A lot of this is not actually changing behaviour, but it's creating visibility around it. So it might be being more open about work-life balances and how we create that and what the challenges are. I hope you've been enjoying the episode. I want to take a moment to let you know about my five-step leadership framework. This is for anyone aspiring to be an exceptional leader, create high-functioning teams and drive consistent and sustainable results. Head over to my website, rebeccabangura.com, to get your free copy or find a link in the show notes. Now, let's get back to the episode. So after role modelling, it doesn't matter what you say as a leader, people will follow the standard that you set. They will follow your example rather than what you say. We need to make sure we are emulating the desired behaviours at all times. And when we fall short of that, for whatever reason, that we address that. We don't just try and sweep it under the carpet and hope no one notices because people do notice. That's not to say that we have to be perfect. Of course, there will be slip-ups, but we need to not sweep those under the carpet because people always notice. And if we don't address our own shortcomings, then people will think that is acceptable. Now, the second part is our behavioural impact. This is really how 
as leaders, our emotional state and how we manage stress and our interpersonal reactions are mirrored within our teams because our unconscious behaviours create a positive or a negative tone for everyone around us. An example of that might be how we deal with conflict. If we are someone that avoids dealing with conflict and we try and skirt around the problem rather than addressing it, that can make a significant amount of ongoing tension within a team. And that can add to everyone's stress levels over a sustained period of time, which is obviously not a great thing. Whereas on the flip side, if we address the conflict and deal with it in a timely manner and in a transparent, open way, then people can move forward and not dwell on things. And look, people will not always get the outcome they want, but it does allow people a platform to speak and share ideas and then move forward without wasting time and energy. I remember (laughs) I once had a manager who, when he was busy, he would just shut down. He would cancel all the team meetings. He would not show up to things. And that had a huge consequence on our team because instead of having the stability of a structure and a forum to escalate things and talk about challenges and opportunities, that manager just completely withdrew and made himself unavailable. And so for the rest of the team, myself included, there was suddenly no platform to escalate things or to check in or to seek support or direction. And as a result, I felt very lost. I felt that I was suddenly swimming in the ocean on my own without any guidance. I think that really reduced my effectiveness at work because I was never sure I was focused on the right things. And the consequence of that was that by not having a 10-minute check-in each week, I was never sure that I was focused on the right things. And that ultimately, I think, impacted my productivity and it definitely impacted my fulfillment at work. We need to be aware of how we respond in stressful situations, how we manage our emotions and our stress state and our interactions, because that will impact all of those around us. Now, finally, communication styles is a really important piece as well. So how we communicate verbally and non-verbally with those around us is really, really crucial. We want to make sure we're always being consistent, clear, empathetic and open in our communications because ultimately that is what builds trust and respect. And without trust and respect, people are not comfortable to challenge ideas or to fully commit to things and suddenly people are not accountable or necessarily driven to achieve results. So we need to make sure we show up consistently for everyone around us. And anyone that's been in a workplace that has felt toxic is usually because their leaders do not have any awareness of their leadership shadow or they have no desire to intentionally cultivate a strong leadership shadow. There are so many negative impacts of the leadership shadow when it's not managed. Things like well-meaning leaders who micromanage things, that leads to a lack of trust and fulfillment for those working for them. Leaders with high expectations that don't offer any support can often result in team members burning out. You know, and at the extreme, leaders who play favourites or don't control their emotional state well or, you know, are unethical or underhanded in their behaviours, that leads to a toxic workplace. No one wants to be there, right? No one wants to be in that environment. It impacts team morale, retention, and ultimately it stops the organisations from achieving the results it's set out to achieve. It impacts organisational performance. And so I want to leave you with this. When we are thinking about our leadership shadow, we want to be intentional about cultivating a positive shadow, something that supports everyone we influence to be set up for success and strive to achieve more and better things. The key to doing that really starts with self-awareness and reflection. I know that sounds easy, but it's incredibly hard to develop because we see ourselves through our own lens. We have to force ourselves to get outside of our own perception and see it from other people's perspective. And we can do that through self-reflection, 360 feedback self-assessments, asking others and regular check-ins to understand what's working and what isn't and what we could do differently is the essential element of successful and impactful leadership. Finally, we need to work on actually cultivating a positive shadow. This is the intentional actions that really create a supportive and inclusive workplace. 
And this is about empowering our team, being empathetic, giving clear directions and being open and transparent. We can do this in so many ways, but often it's the little things. It's the acknowledgement of a job well done. It's taking the time to check in on an employee or a stakeholder that make all the difference. And so I want to leave you today with really thinking about what is your leadership shadow right now? What does it look like? What are the positive aspects? What are the perhaps negative aspects? And if you're brave enough, I strongly encourage you to talk to some people around you and ask for their open feedback because they will give you insights that you yourself may not see. I invite you to really think about what do you want your leadership shadow to be? It's where you might work with a coach or a manager to create a plan to ensure that what you say, how you act, what you prioritize and how you measure things is consistent and is aligned with what you want and the direction you are steering your team and your organization. And then finally, you know, be open about this process. We are all an ongoing work in process. We never arrive and have it all figured out. But the more transparent you can be with people, the more you can take them on the journey and engage their feedback and their insight, the more willing they will be to not only support you on the journey, but also to think about their own leadership shadow you know, and get intentional about their influence and their impact within the team. And if we can get everyone doing this, everyone thinking about this and aligned and working towards the same thing, that is when we see incredibly strong leaders and incredibly strong cultures that create sustained results. And I think that's what we all want to be part of. So lots to think about today. As always, I would love to hear any insights you have. You can find me over on LinkedIn. I'm Rebecca Bangura and come and share with me. What is your intention for your leadership shadow? Share with me what has today's episode brought up for you? What is your intention for your leadership shadow moving forward? Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Building Up Women in Property. Thanks for joining me on the Building Up Women in Property podcast. If you're listening on Apple Podcast or Spotify, I'd love for you to take a moment and review the show if you found it helpful or share it with a few friends. Thanks again. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time.